Good morning, Calvary Chapel of La Palma, and good morning to those of you online. Let's go ahead and ask the Lord to bless our worship time. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come before you this morning, Lord. And Lord, we just want to worship you, Lord, and we want to praise your mighty name, Lord. We want to glorify you, Lord. Lord, we just want to bask in your holy presence. And Lord, we just ask that uh, you just give us your mercy and your grace, Lord, because we need it right now, Lord. And Lord, we just pray that you would heal our nation. And Lord, I just pray that all those that are called by your name, Lord, would stand up and be counted, especially during this election time, Lord. Lord, we love you, and we pray that you would just inhabit the praises of your people this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love your grace, I love your mercy. I love the way you help me when I come. I love the truth, I love the power of your name. But you know I love your presence most of all. I love your grace. I love your grace, I love your mercy. I love the way you help me when I come. I love the truth, the love, the power of your name. But you know I love your presence most of all. My soul takes refuge in the shadow of your wings. And close to you is where I want to be. You are my strength, you are my God, you are my King. And all I want is what you want for me. Yeah. I love your grace, I love your mercy. I love the way you help me when I call. I love the truth, I love the power. But you know I love your presence most of all My soul takes refuge in the shadow of your wings and Close to you is where I want to be You are my strength, you are my God, you are my King And all I want is what you want for me I love your mercy. I love the way you help me when I call. I love the truth. I love the power of your name. But you know I love your presence most of all. But you know I love your presence most of all. But you know I love your presence most of Oh, 
Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for all me. Great is your love and justice, God of Jacob. You use the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. And all your people sing along. So remember your peace. Oh, your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Oh, your grace is enough for me. Oh, your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Oh, your grace is enough for me. So remember your peace. Remember your children, remember your promise of God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. Yeah. seated at this time, and uh, any time during the service, if you feel like standing up and lifting your hands, uh, anything except barking like dogs, okay, you can do, because the Lord is worthy of praise. That was just a joke. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, so much for your grace. Lord, we thank you for your mercy. And Lord, we just want to continue worshiping you now, Lord. Lord, this is just a practice time, Lord, when, for when we are with you in eternity, Lord, just gathered around your throne, Lord, just praising you. What a wonderful time that's going to be, Lord. Jesus, Lord of heaven, I do not deserve. Jesus, your love has no 
Jesus, Lord of heaven, I do not deserve. It'll last for words And the funny thing is It's okay The last thing I need Is to be heard But to hear What you would say
and in the quiet I hear your voice the word of God speak won't you pour down like rain washing my eyes to see your majesty be still and know that you're in this place please let me stay You pour down that rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty. Be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness. Word of God speak. And lost for words And the funny thing is It's okay Can I have the ushers come up at this time? Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you so much, Lord, for all your blessings that you have given us, Lord. Lord, you are the creator of the universe. You are the creator of the, the earth and all that is in it. And Lord, we just want to give back to you, Lord, for the furtherance of your kingdom, Lord. So, Lord, we ask that you would just bless these tithes and offerings, Lord. Multiply it, Lord, as you did the loaves and the fish, Lord. Lord, we just want to continue to glorify you now in Jesus' name. Would you stand up for this last song?
Sinless above love song I want to bring to you So I let my words be you Oh yeah Jesus I am so Good morning. Please uh, remain standing and open your Bible to Psalm 98. Again, uh, Psalm 98, and uh, we will uh, read all together. O sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation. His righteousness he has revealed in the sight of the nation. He has remembered his mercy and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout joyfully to the Lord all the earth. Break forth into the songs. Rejoice and sing praises. Sing to the Lord with the harp with the harp of the sound of the psalm, with the trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout joyfully before the Lord the King. Let the sea roar and all its faithfulness, the world and the, those who dwell in it. Let the river clap their hands. Let the hills be joyful together before the Lord. For he is coming to judge the earth. With righteousness he shall judge the world and the people's will with equity. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for, the, for allowing us here today to worship you and praise you. Lord, thank you for this wonderful message of Psalm. Thank you for the gift of songs. You filled our heart with joyfulness and delights. We will always praise you with songs. Father God, help us open your word for us. Let us understand what you have to say. Speak to us, O Lord. Everything that we don't understand, help us to understand. Help us to understand and receive and expand in faith. Show us your ways, Lord. Your ways will be our ways too, Lord. For we know that your ways are righteous and holy. Lord, come to us in your power that we may be filled with your faithfulness and goodness. Thank you, Lord, for all your guidance and provisions. Thank you, Lord, for giving us strength in our times of troubles. We come to you with sincere love and praise. Thank you, Lord, for all your blessings. We praise you. We love you. In most powerful Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, announcement uh, for this week. Monday. Zoom prayer at 7 p.m. Let's join and pray with each other. And for those who have some prayer requests, please send your prayer requests early. 
On Thursday, we have a Bible study at 7 p.m. here at our church. If you are able, please do come. On a Friday, we have uh, the men's ministry at Zoom, on Zoom at 7 p.m. All of our men are encouraged to attend. Let's share our spiritual concerns and ideas and pray for one another. Election is fast approaching. Please go and vote on November 3. And also, let's pray for Sister Donna Sipil to give her guidance and wisdom and strength as she's vying for fourth district council member here in Buena Park. May I request uh, Sister Donna and uh, Br Brother Brent to come in here in the podium, please? We will pray for you. And also, Pastor. I just want to express my sincerest thanks for all the prayers and support that this church has been giving to me and the entire campaign team. We have uh, November 3rd is, is it's in two days. <laughs> um, we have been nonstop every day that I have made an announcement um, that I'm filing my candidacy. You have been a great support. I felt all the, I praise God for giving me protection this campaign because I was knocking on each door. I've co we've covered 99.9% .9 of the entire district floor. So praise God for meeting everybody. Um, and I've heard each one's concern in our district as well as being invited with other cities. And so I really praise God for giving me, my husband, and the entire campaign team good health and being able to speak to everyone's concern and hearing them. I think most importantly is hearing our constituents and hearing also people of color um, giving me messages about how inspiring it is for a young person like me and a person of color to be representing them. Um, also an opportunity also for our faith to be there. Um, they are so happy someone in our church is representing the district and being able to be put into the diocese of the council. So thank you all, thank you so much. We have two more days, keep on praying. Um, and I always say, win or lose, what matters is that we have been there, we stepped up and listened to the calling of the Lord. And so with that, thank you all so much. We are going to pray for Sister Dorna, as you know, one more time. Boyna Park, District 4. If you haven't voted in District 4, she's our family here. And pray, continue to pray. May God's will take place. She did her part. When she texted me that, Pastor, I did 99.9% .9 walking into all the homes. So she did faithfully, not laziness, but she did all the hard work. Thank God for her family, stood by her friends, church members, so let's pray for her, please. Oh, yes. and, and we ran a, a cl very clean campaign. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord because we are God's people. Yes. So she is a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, she has been serving at our church for many years in the children's ministry. So we want her to win. That's our prayer so that she will be a blessing to this neighborhood. We want God's people in high places. Amen. Amen. So let's stretch our hands towards Sister Donna, and we are going to bless her in the name of the Lord, and we are going to pray for her one more time. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you. We cry out to you alongside of Sister Donna. We thank you for your faithfulness in her life. Thank you for calling her, saving her. Thank you for bringing her into the family of God. Lord, we thank you for bringing her into our lives, that we could serve together all these years. And now, Lord Jesus, you have given her this 
another calling, Father, to serve in the city, to represent this area, District 4 of Buena Park. So we bless Sister Donna Sippel. We pray that you anoint her, fill her with your strength and power. You gave her wisdom. You gave her courage. You gave her all the instructions she needs, Father. And she did everything faithfully, Lord Jesus. We thank you for what you're going to do. We thank you for all the people who supported her, gave her words of advice, encouragement, prayers, all these days. We thank you for that. And we commit this District 4 into your care and the whole city of Buena Park. We pray for your mercy and grace. We pray for the whole um, uh, state of California. We pray for your grace to cover. We want your will to be done. We want righteousness to rule and reign. We want God's children to be in high places. We pray for that. That's our prayer for the whole nation too. We pray for that to happen, Father. As we are your children, we represent your word. We, we value your word. Your word is more important to us, Father. So help us to remember the values that you have placed in the word of God. And I pray that those biblical standards will be applied in our lives. So I pray that you bless once again all those who are running for offices, that your grace be upon them, Father. Especially one more time, Lord, we pray for Sister Donna. Bless Brent. We thank you for his support, undivided attention, sacrifices, and all the care and concern he had. Thank you for his children. Thank you for the, um, her dad. We thank you for all those who were part of this. We give you praise and honor and glory. We thank all those who helped her, all the church members who were faithfully praying. And I pray that we have two more days to pray for her. I pray that our prayers will be strong, so strong that uh, her life would be changed and blessed. I pray that she will be true to you, to your word, and I pray that she will represent you well. We give you praise and bless this family in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. We pray all these things in Jesus' most powerful and precious name. Amen. 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 Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Turn with me to the book of Joshua chapter 8. We have been studying through the book of Joshua and chapter 8. We see the victory at I. The victory at I. Joshua chapter 8. Speaking to a large audience, deal Moody, and you know Moody Bible Institute. And this man of God held a glass and asked the congregation, how can I get the air out of this glass? End quote. How can I get the air out of this glass? And one man shouted from the congregation as he said, suck it out with a pump. And Moody replied, that would create a vacuum and it will shatter the glass. After numerous suggestions, Moody smiled and pick up, picked up a bottle of water and he filled the glass with that water. And there he said, all the air is now removed. He then went on to explain that victory in the Christian life is not accomplished by sucking out sin and here and there, but by being filled with the Holy Spirit. But being filled with the Holy Spirit. Last week we studied what happened when Joshua did not include God in his decision. They failed at I. But today we see the hand of God in chapter 8 when he asked for God's help. When he asked for God's help, it was victory. So we are going to look at that. Father, we pray that you would speak to us, minister to our hearts. Thank you for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So Joshua chapter 8 verse 1. Shall we read? Joshua chapter 8 verse 1. Now the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. Take all the people of war with you and arise, go up to I. See, look at that. Maybe highlight it, underline it. I have given into your hand the king of I, his people, 
his city and his land. I have given to you. Victory is yours. And that's the first thought I have for you on the screen. We should trust in the promise of God. We should trust in the promise of God. In chapter 7, we studied that. They failed at I because they were overconfident, overconfident in themselves. And also the sin of Achan took place. Joshua and the people learned from their mistakes since then. They sought God's pray, uh, face in prayer. When Joshua understood, immediately he began to pray. And the Lord spoke to Joshua and said, The whole nation of Israel, we are not talking about 10 or 1,000 people. We are talking about over 2 million people. The Lord said, All of them need to rededicate their life before my presence. And as a result, God spoke to Joshua in chapter 8, verse 1, to encourage him with the words of comfort and to call to the battle. When we know sometimes... When we know sometimes it will, we find it difficult to get back to the game after we lose or after a failure or when we fail due to our flesh. Book of Joshua is comparing to our Christian life, right? When we fail due to our flesh, we wonder if we will ever get back to where we were before. So you and I can imagine the heart of Joshua at this point and God promised him that victory is assured. So what did God say? Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. Who needs that today? Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. The Lord desires to encourage you the same way this morning. Our Christian life will thrive for the Lord as we trust in God's promises this morning. Fear not or do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. The enemy comes to remind us always about our failures, right? Enemy comes to, that's his job, to come and tell us about our failures in our spiritual life. But we are given strength through Christ to get up and to be prepared to move on because our past is the past. We need to remind ourselves, my past is the past and the Lord is calling me to move forward in this life. So as Paul said, we must let go of our past by crucifying our flesh to the Lord. We gave our hearts to the Lord, but our flesh is still weak. And we have to crucify that to the Lord every day so that we can have a victorious life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you're discouraged about your spiritual life this morning, the word of the Lord is speaking to you from Joshua chapter 8 verse 1. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. Instead what? Take courage in the Lord Jesus Christ because the Lord redeemed each one of us and we are His and he wants us to have a victorious Christian life, not a defeated one. Don't allow Satan to defeat you every now and then. Have a victorious Christian life as we trust in the Lord. Let's look at point number two in verses, verse one, the last part, and verse two. The Lord said, see, I have given into your hand the king of Ai, his people, his city, and his land. Verse 2, and you shall do to I, very important, you shall do to I and its king as you did to Jericho and its king. Only its spoil and its cattle you shall take as booty for yourself, lay an ambush for the city behind it. The second point on the screen, you see, you should trust in the importance of patience. The Lord is reminding Joshua, you need to have patience. Right after victory at Jericho, what did they do? The next day they went to the battle to defeat the city of Ai and they failed. They never sought the Lord's face. They never asked his permission. They never sought his wisdom for victory at Jericho. The Lord gave the battle plan. They had overconfidence in themselves. So here the instruction included a call for patience. Which they exercised during the battle at Jericho. It was a seven days battle. It was not a one-day battle, seven days without talking, without fighting, walk around the city. And I said, it's like a prayer walk. We used to do that here in the city. In the beginning, early stages of the church, prayer walk every Monday night. Prayer walk so that victory is ours. The Lord said, do exactly that at I. What you did at Jericho and the victory is certain. All the people of Israel must be part of this battle. In the 
in their overconfidence. They took only 3,000 men before, and they underestimated their enemy's strength. Therefore, God said, this time the entire nation must go, right? This time the entire nation must go. But this time you can have all the spoils, which means the riches of I, you can take it. But at the battle of Jericho, the Lord said, don't touch any riches. Everything belongs to the Lord. Bring it to the treasury of the Lord. Don't take it. But one man did not obey that, right? Achan. He stole because his eyes were at attracted by the, the precious things that he saw and he hid it in his camp. And we know what happened to him. The Lord's, punish the Lord's punishment came upon him. So keep in mind how wonderful it would have been for Achan to wait on the Lord in patience for a few more days. Don't you think about that? Here at the battle at Ai, the Lord told Joshua, this time you can have everything. You can take the riches of Ai. But at the battle of Jericho, several days ago, the Lord said, don't take anything. Achan had no patience. If he would have waited, he could have had all the riches with permission from the Lord. His life would have been protected. He could have enjoyed the blessings of the Lord. Sometimes we too run ahead of the Lord to grab the blessings and without realizing it or forgetting the truth that it is forbidden by God at this time or the time has not come yet. So may the Lord remind us to wait on the Lord patiently. More prayer is always good. More prayer. More waiting. We should tell others. Those who you trust and say pray with me. I want the Lord's will upon this matter. I want to know whether the Lord is directing me to this. Like you, we can ruin everything in life due to our greed or selfish desires. God's word gives us great insights to wait in patience. Wait on the Lord and his word and stand and see what the Lord will do for us. Amen. Stand and see what the Lord will do for us. Be patient. Keep on praying. Our fleshly man is the problem. Fleshly man is this one, right? This is the man that's the problem. Cannot wait. If he is not crucified daily in Christ, submitted to Christ's leading and his obedience, then we will fail. Remember the prayer of Jesus, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. That must be our prayer. The Lord calls us to victory each day by holding on to his promise. The Lord told Joshua, Believe in my promise, trust in my promise, and be patient to wait, and you can have all these blessings. Let's look at point number three. That is from verses three to verse 17. We should trust in the plan God has for us. We should trust in the plan that God has for us. The strategy God laid out to Joshua was to attack the city from behind. Look at verse one, the last part. Verse one I think it was verse 1 toward the end. He said, <clears throat> sorry, verse 2, last part. The last line there. Lay an ambush for the city of Ai. From where? Behind. That was the strategy of God. The plan of God was laid out and explained to the people of Israel. It is better to obey and follow God's plan in our lives than trusting in our souls. For the city of Jericho, the plan was different. Go around the city for seven days. The whole, the all Israelites, they must march. But on the seventh day, they have to march how many times? Seven times. And what's that? When the Lord gives a sign, you shout and the walls will be broken down. That was a battle plan for the city of Jericho. But the battle plan for city of Ai is what? Plan an attack from behind, but patiently wait for the Lord. So God gave the general plan to Joshua, but all the details of that plan was determined by Joshua's prayerful decisions. Sometimes the Lord tells us, this is what you're going to do. Then we pray on the Lord, how I might do this? When should I take that step? Those things are prayerful decisions with wise counsel from others. So Joshua's plan involved three groups. 
So the first group he selected was a group of 30,000 men. Let's read verse 2, the last part to verse 9. Verse 2, the last part was lay an ambush for the city behind it. Verse 3, so Joshua arose and all the people of war to go up against Ai. And Joshua chose how many? 30,000 mighty men of valor and sent them away by night. And he commanded them saying, behold, you shall lie in ambush against the city. Look at that. Behind the city. Do not go very far from the city, but all of you be ready. Then I and all the people who are with me will approach the city. And it will come about when they come out against us at the first that we shall flee before them. Verse 6. For they will come out after us till we have drawn them from the city. For they will say, they are fleeing before us at the first. Therefore, we will flee before them. Then you shall rise from the ambush and seize the city. For the Lord your God will deliver it into your hand. And it will be when you have taken the city that you shall see or set the city on fire. According to the command of the Lord, you shall do. See, I have commanded you. Verse 9, we'll stop it here. Joshua, therefore, sent them out, and they went to lie in ambush. Who? How many people? 30,000 people. They are behind the city, hiding, and stayed between Bethel and I, on the west side of I, but Joshua lord that night among the people. So the first group was selected, a group of 30,000 men, and they were sent out by night to hide behind, it seems, in the... There were large rocks there in that region. And their assignment was to hide and wait there and set the city on fire by using everything they had. And how would they know the sign? That is the second one. Look at the second group was the main army with Joshua along with the people, the leader with the people. Look at verse 10 and 11. It says, Then Joshua rose up early in the morning and mustered the people and went up he and the elders of Israel before the people to Ai. And all the people of war who were with him went up and drew near. And they came before the city and camped on the north side of Ai, which is in, in the friend. Now a valley lay between them and Ai. So that is a second group, right? So Joshua's battle plan, as God gave him the idea, the first group, 30,000 people behind the city, hiding behind the rocks. Now another big group with Joshua coming to the friend, and their plan is what? Get their attention, and as soon as they see them, their plan was to, to run from the city. And what happens? All the soldiers of Ai will go after Joshua and the people, and when they go, what happens? The 30,000 people hiding behind the city would come and set the city on fire. So now let's look at the third group. Third group was a group of 5,000 men they waited between two cities. I is the main city they are aiming for. And there's another city named Bethel. In between those two cities, 5,000 men were hiding. Look at verses 12 and 13. Verse 12 and 13. So he took about 5,000 men and set them in ambush between Bethel and I on the west side of the city. And when they had set the people, all the army that was on the north of the city, okay, that is the front of the city where Joshua and the people, the second group, and its near guard on the west side of the city, Joshua went that night in the midst of the valley. So their plan was to divert the attention of the soldiers of Ai by leading them out of the city. And the third groups, the, sorry, the third group of 5,000 men, their job was to divert, att sorry, to cut off any reinforcement from the city of Bethel. In the olden times, a city can ask for help from the another, other city, right? Please come and help us. We are in a difficult situation. Like, Buena Park police need help. They call what? City of Norwalk, city of La Palma, or city of, uh, let's say, Fullerton. We need backup. So the third group, 5,000 men, their plan was, Stay between I and Bethel. If they send reinforcement from Bethel, they will stop them. Having these three groups remind us that as God commanded Joshua, 
Israel has to go to the battle to gain victory. They cannot stay in their homes or where were they, where were they hiding or where were they staying? Before Jericho? After crossing Jordan, they came, I forgot that city name. Anyone remember that? Okay, so they were hiding there. They cannot stay there for this, to get victory. They had to go to the battle to gain victory. So one of the commentators said, they must take the offense. They don't wait to, for I to bring the battle to them, but bring the battle to I. And the point is, I like it, we must take the offensive against the powers of darkness and temptation and be busy for the Lord in obeying God's word. We need to do our part, right? We need to continue to work hard. We need to take the offense, offensive and we need to continue to move forward obeying the word of God. We must take the steps to defeat what destroys our spiritual life. We cannot always take the defensive position, then Satan will take over us we need to take the offensive how read the word more more prayer ask for counseling come to church get involved in the ministry get busy throughout the week do something that is taking offensive position against satan but if you're taking defensive position then satan will take over us and ruin our lives let's read verse 14 through 17 now it happened when the king of i saw it that the men of the city hurried and rose early and went out against Israel to battle, he and all his people at an appointed place before the plain. But he did not know that there was an ambush against him behind the city. So the king of Ai never knew the battle plan of Joshua. Verse 15, And Joshua and all Israel made as if they were beaten before them and fled by the way of the wilderness. So all the people who were in Ai were called together to pursue them. See, that was their idea. The second group with Joshua, a large group of people, will go in front of the city of Ai, get the attention of the king of Ai and their soldiers. As soon as they see them, they will run in a manner showing that, pretending that they, were, they already failed. When they run, they will come after. And they pursued Joshua and were drawn away from the city. Verse 17, there was not a man left in Ai or Bethel who did not go out after Israel. So they left the city, what? Open and pursued Israel. The city, uh, the place Israelites were camping were known as Gilgal. That's a city I forgot. It was called Gilgal. They didn't stay there. They are going for the offensive to attack the city of Ai. And here the plan worked. The plan worked. Because the king of Ai took the bait. When he saw Joshua and the people and the army with Joshua early in that morning, king of Ai decided to pursue after Joshua and the people. He did not know that the Israelites were pretending to retreat. He didn't know that they were pretending. They thought this is actually they failed. Because a few days ago, Israelites failed. This is the same thing they did. They pursued after them and killed 36 Israelites. So we read there, the city was left unguarded. See how God's plan worked for them? God gave a different strategy against I. For us believers, when we take this for our spiritual life, our spiritual victories are won only if we trust God's plan that he gives to us. We cannot defeat sin. We cannot defeat the world. We cannot defeat our flesh with our own personal ideas. Our flesh grows when we feed our flesh with everything in the world, right? We come to church Sunday. Then we have Thursday. Then we only come back on Sunday again. Or if you have a, another ministry on Fridays. But the remaining days, if you have no touch with the word of God, if you have no touch with, with prayer life, no getting involved in the lives of others, and we are in the world and we forget everything about the Lord until we come back. Then what happens? Everything is feeding onto our flesh. And the fleshly man grows. So when someone says something, it gets off, we get offended quickly. Because we are not feeding our, our spiritual man. We are only feeding what the world does to us. Or the things we see, watch on television. A particular show or social media. All these things can what? Feeding our flesh day by day. 
and we get irritated, we get confused, we get angered, and all these things come against us. And at that moment, if you are in that position, I get that too sometimes. You and I need to realize my feeding is not good. I'm feeding my flesh. I'm not feeding my spiritual man. The spiritual man needs the word of God. Spiritual man needs prayer. Spiritual man needs to hear some sermons. Spiritual man needs to hear gospel songs or praise songs or worship songs. Or spiritual man needs another brother's or another sister's company or fellowship. I need to call them and say, please pray for me. Please pray for me. So we need to remember that. So when our spiritual man grows, when we feed everything with the word, prayer life, fellowship, assembling of the church on Sundays, Thursdays, and other services, our spiritual man grows, we get the strength, and we defeat Satan and his purpose against us. May we don't neglect anything that is important for our spiritual growth. Number four, we should trust in the power of God in our lives. We should trust in in the power of God for our lives. Let's read verses 18 through 23 right now. Verse 18. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Stretch out the spear that is in your hand toward I, for I will give it to your hand. And Joshua stretched out the spear that was in his hand toward the city. So those in ambush, so 30,000 men, right, in ambush arose quickly out of their place. They ran as soon as he had, Joshua had stretched out his hand and they entered the city and took it and hurried to set the city on fire. And when the men of Ai looked behind them, they saw and behold, the smoke of the city ascended to heaven. So they had no power to flee this way or that way. And the people who had fled to the wilderness turned back on the pursuers. 21. Now when Joshua and all Israel saw that the ambush had taken the city, that the smoke of the city ascended, they turned back and struck down the men of Ai. Then the others came out of the city against them, so they were caught in the midst of Israel, some on this side and some on that side, and they struck them down so that they let none of them remain or escape. Verse 23, but the king of Ai, they took him alive and brought him to Joshua. We should trust in the power of God for our lives. When we follow God's plan, we will enjoy God's power in our lives that gives us victory against the enemy. Joshua obeyed the Lord as the Lord told him to stretch out his spear toward the city to begin the attack. That was like a sign to 30,000 men who were hiding behind the city. Obviously, that signal conveyed that message to them. And they were hiding behind the rocks who fulfilled their task of setting the city on fire. And God gave them a great victory that day against the city of Ai. The same way when we rely on the Lord, trust in God's power and strength, we will overcome every spiritual battle we face in this life. We need men or women like Joshua in our lives who can give a signal to us. This is time you need to rise up, stand for the Lord. This is the time you need to fight for the Lord. This is the time you need to shine for the Lord. To defeat the world, Satan and our flesh. Because we don't have power or strength or ability to push away or to stand against anything that comes against us to our spiritual life. But to trust in God's power. The Lord is ready and he's available and to fight for us. But we need to let him and he will fight our spiritual battles that try to bring us down. Let's keep reading 24 to 29 now. And it came to pass when Israel had made... An end of slaying all the inhabitants of Ai in the field, in the wilderness where they pursued them. And when they all had fallen by the edge of the sword until they were consumed, that all the Israelites returned to Ai and struck it with the edge of the sword. So it was that all who fell that day, both men and women, were 12,000, all the people of Ai. For Joshua did not draw back his hand with which he stretched out the spear until he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai. Only the livestock and the spoil of the city Israel took as booty for themselves, according to the word of the Lord which he had commanded Joshua. That is, was in verse 2. So Joshua burned Ai and made it a heap forever, a desolation to when? To this day. Verse 29. 
And the king of Ai, he hanged on a tree until evening. As soon as the sun was down, Joshua commanded that they should take his corpse down from the tree, cast it at the entrance of the gate of the city, and rise, raise over it a great heap of stones that remains to this day. All the verses remind us again that the strategies of God worked and God fulfilled his word to Joshua. That is in verse 2. Because they carried out God's instruction. The result was the Israelites prevailed against their enemies. The God of Israel is our God too. The God of Israel is our God too. We, we call our God the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right? He's our God too. He's the same as today, today, and forever. This gives us confidence in our God that He's the God of second chances. Yes, they failed in their first attempt against I because they didn't pray and seek the Lord's face. The Lord gives us second chances. One defeat or failure is not the end of a believer's usefulness for God's work. God is a gracious God. He's a compassionate God. He's a forgiving God. He's a restoring God. His power will rejuvenate us to stand strong for Him and be useful again for His purpose. Thank God, God gave another chance to Joshua and his people. I want to point out two verses here. One is verse 18, another one is verse 26. Look at verse 18. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Stretch out the spear that is in your hand toward I, for I will give it into your hand. And Joshua stretched out the spear that was in his hand toward the city. Now look at verse 26. Verse 26 says, For Joshua did not draw back his hand with which he stretched out the spear until he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai. The stretching corresponds to the uplifted hands of Moses in the war against Amalek in Exodus chapter 17. The Lord told Moses, when your hands are lifted up, what happens? Victory is yours. But when your hands go down, victory is not yours. What's the lesson there? Lifting up of your hands, what's the prayer life? When you pray, victory is yours. The more you pray, the more you will see the hand of God. So Joshua, we read it, 18, God commanded, lift up your hand and stretch your spear toward the city. And in 26 we read, until everything was completed, he was still stretching toward the city. Prayer life. God's power in securing complete victory. Joshua's uplifted arm was an act of faith. Trust in the Lord. Prayer in the outstretched arm and power of God. That is what we need to do. That we should never st stop trusting in God's power. Never stop our prayer life. Keep on praying, right? Keep on praying. The Lord said, keep on knocking, keep on seeking, keep on praying or keep on asking. Apostle Paul said, Pray without ceasing. That means don't give up in your prayer life. Keep on praying because our hope is in the living God whose plans will always prevail. That's a great thought for us. If you want to see the power of God, lift up your hands and pray. And thank God for that great lesson. Last thought for today, verse number five. We should be obedient to God's word. 30 to 35. Now Joshua built an altar to the Lord God of Israel in Mount Ebal, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded the children of Israel, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of whole stones over which no man has wielded an iron tool, and they offered on it burnt offerings to the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings. And there in the presence of the children of Israel, he wrote, on the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he had written. Then all Israel, with their elders and officers and judges, stood on either side of the ark before the priests and Levites, who bore the ark of covenant of the Lord, the stranger as well as he who has born among them. Half of them were in front of Mount Gerizim, and half of them in front of Mount Ebal, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded before, that they should bless the people of Israel. And afterward, he read all the words of the law, the blessings and the cursings, according to all that is written in the book of the law. 
There was not a word of all that Moses had commanded, which Joshua did not read before all the assembly of Israel, with the women, the little ones, and the strangers who were living, living among them. We should be obedient to God's word. Moses, the servant of God, died long time ago. But he commanded certain things for Joshua to do. And he fulfilled them. Three important things you see here in obedience to God's word. But in the eyes of others, especially, I'm just imagining the soldiers of Israel, or the military officers, or the common people, this could have been a foolish thing. What do you mean by this could have been a foolish thing? Right after the victory at Ai, they did everything the Lord had told them. After the battle, instead of securing everything they won, or taking control of what they had fought for, Joshua decided to fulfill a com commitment to God. Right after the victory, usually you secure the land, you put your officers or soldiers to guard the place you won. That's how I battled. But right after that, Joshua said, let's all go toward the Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim. He wanted to fulfill a commitment to the Lord. What we are going to see here is Joshua's memory and his faithfulness to the previously given command by Moses. I would like to read that to you. It is in Deuteronomy chapter 27. You can write it down. If you like, you can turn in there. Jo Deuteronomy is to your left-hand side of Joshua, the next book. Deuteronomy chapter 27. Joshua 27, 1 through 8. Now Moses with the elders of Israel commanded the people, saying, Keep all the commandments which I command you today. And it shall be on the day when you cross over, see? And it shall be on the day when you cross over the Jordan to the land which the Lord God is giving you, that you shall set up for yourself large stones and whitewash them with lime. And you write on them all the words of this law, which Joshua did, when you have crossed over that you may enter the land which the Lord God is giving you, a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord God your fathers promised you, God of your fathers promised you. Verse 4, Therefore it shall be when you have crossed over the Jordan, that on Mount Ebal you shall set up these stones which I command you today, and you shall whitewash them with lime. And there you shall build an altar to the Lord your God, an altar of stones. You shall not use iron tool on them. You shall build the whole stones the altar of the Lord your God, and offer burnt offerings on it to the Lord your God. You shall offer peace offerings, and you shall eat there and rejoice before the Lord your God. And you shall write very plainly on the stones all the words of this law. Then the remaining things is when Joshua reads it from the law of God, people are saying, Amen, Amen, Amen to every sentence. You can see that in the remaining. So the point here is, first of all, Joshua built an altar to the Lord on Mount Ebal. Uncut stones and offered sacrifice to the Lord. <clears throat> it was an appropriate act of worship after their victory. Giving God glory is more important than anything else. Right? Don't you think so? Giving God the glory that he deserves is more important than anything else. Usually we all forget that. We get to celebrate. And instead of taking a moment to acknowledge God's great faithfulness. God's great faithfulness. When they saw this, they understood it was all God's hand. It was all God's plan. It was all his power that helped them to defeat the armies of Ai. So the first thing Joshua did was what? Built an altar to the Lord. Reminds us of worship. Second thing Joshua did was he wrote the law of God of, on the large stones. This is a good practice in public. About two million people are watching most, Joshua writing the law of God on large stones. It is a good practice to have Bible verses inside our homes. It is a good practice to have Bible words be read at church. We read, that is why we read a psalm together, right? Because we are the family of God. We need to read a passage together. It is good to read God's word in public places. It reminds us that God's word is truth. It will never fail. It can encourage us. It can challenge someone. It can convict someone else. So the first thing... Built an altar, reminds of worship. Two, reading of God's word in public. Third thing he did, sorry, writing of God's word in public. And the third thing, he read the Lord to the people. And this was the first 
public reading from the word of God. Half of the nation stood on one mount, in front of one mountain and the half on the other mountain. Everyone responded by saying amen, we, as we read from Deuteronomy 27. To every statement, the history says from this point onwards, the Israelites always read the law of God in public for everyone to hear and understand the truth that obedience brings blessings and disobedience brings curses to their life. We should uphold that as a good practice of reading of God's word in our family, at our church, in our public gatherings, where so we can live by the word of God. So we will understand, I live by the word of God. I value this. I honor this. We should rejoice and appreciate those who do that faithfully. It creates us in an attitude regarding the importance of obedience to God, God's word and value in our lives. It is a good reminder, every blessing comes through the father of lights, not from our own strength and power. Here, Joshua going to that mountain to worship. A commitment that he took long time ago with Moses and fulfilling it. Sometimes we make commitment, right? And after a few months or years later, we may forget it. May the Lord bring things to our mind so that we can honor him, worship him, and praise him. When we worship and read his word, we are reminded of this truth that the importance of trusting in God. Let me conclude here. May we remember to the Lord and that we have great commitment to the Lord. Every decision we make should be under God's guidance and that it will turn out to be a blessing to our spiritual life and that it will be a blessing in our victorious Christian life. So the Lord will be praised, people around us will be blessed, blessed and others will be uh, touched by our Christian life. Amen? So let's go ahead and pray. And after that, we are going to get into the communion. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that we could come and look into your word and study. Thank you, Father, for teaching us this lesson from the life of Joshua. The victory they received because they faithfully followed your instruction. They patiently waited on you. They trusted in your promises. They trusted in your power. We thank you, Father. And we thank you for the obedience they had at the end. We praise you and we honor you and we bless your name. Thank you for today. I pray that this reminds us of our Christian journey. And I pray that our spiritual life will be built in the name of the Lord. I pray that you help us to walk with you. Help us to have such a strong commitment to you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for ministering to our hearts. We thank you for all those who are watching online. Bless them too and their families. Continue to go before us, Lord, surrendering all our hearts to you. Lead us and guide us. We thank you for these instructions. I pray that you give each one of us a continuous, victorious Christian life. Love you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brother Leo is going to come and give an, a, a quick devotion on communion. So please come. Amen. If you can turn with me to Luke twenty-two nineteen, so we can read this uh, passage together. Luke twenty-two nineteen. Luke twenty-two nineteen says, and he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. And gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the Bible says God remembered, the, the original Hebrew verb for the word remembered is zakar. This word zakar, it does mean to remember, but it also means to bring someone to mind. And then act upon that person's behalf. 
The Hebrew idea of remembering always includes acting on behalf of the one brought to mind. I'll give you a biblical example of that. Of, uh, well, biblical examples of remember including action, like we just talked about, on the other person's behalf. Are, there's a lot of them in the Bible. And I'll give you one example. It's in Genesis chapter 8, verse 1. And it says, When God remembered Noah, he made a wind blow over the earth, and the waters subsided. God first turned his attention to Noah, and then acted on Noah's behalf, Zakar. The Passover was the most sacred feast of the Jewish religious year. It commemorated what we recently studied in the book of Exodus, um, the final plague on Egypt when the firstborn of the Egyptians, uh, Egyptians died, and the Israelites were spared because of the blood of the lamb that was sprinkled on their doorposts. They, they remembered the lamb was then roasted and eaten with unleavened bread. God's command was that throughout the generations to, to come, the feast would be celebrated and that they would remember what God had done in their lives. During that last supper, Jesus and his disciples were celebrating the Passover. Over the last 2,000 years, communion has been celebrated by almost every branch of Christianity. Some call it communion. Some call it um, the Eucharist, some call it the Lord's Supper. It's a ceremony that both unites and divides Christians. It, it expresses our common faith in Jesus Christ. Yet at the same time, various aspects of the ceremony have caused um, many disputes or controversy. Uh, for example, like when should it be celebrated? Who should administer it? Who should take part in it? Um, when it's eaten? It's easy to get sidetracked in the midst of all these disputes or these controversies from the, from the central message, which is the celebration of uh, Jesus' sacrificial death. Titus 3.9 says this. It says, avoid foolish disputes, genealogies, contentions, and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and useless. Just like the interpretations that we said, um, the disputes, there, there's a lot of foolish disputes in our lives. Um, right now, you see it in the news. You see it everywhere. People are disputing politics, social issues. Imagine for a second that our church was this huge warehouse or, let's say, an airplane hangar shaped in a triangle. And at the front is Jesus Christ at the top, and at the base is the church where we're all spread out. It's, uh, it's easy to be divided when you're spread out, when we're not in close communion with one another. But the closer we get to the top of that triangle, the closer we get to Jesus, and the closer we come together. Communion is one of those things that causes us to, to reset, to remember that word zakar, and then to take action on it. The Apostle Paul wrote concerning the Lord's Supper. Um, Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. We may ask what it means to partake of the bread and the cup in an unworthy manner. It may mean to disregard the true meaning of the bread and cup and to forget the tremendous price our Savior paid for our salvation. Or it may mean to allow the ceremony to become a dead and formal ritual or, or to come to the Lord's Supper with unconfessed sin. In keeping with Paul's instruction, we should examine ourselves before eating the bread and drinking the cup. Today, with all the division in our society, within our church, within our circle of friends, even our, our family, we should examine ourselves and ask God to remove anything that might be hindering us today, this morning, from partaking this morning. Do we have any unconfessed sin in our lives? Are there any foolish disputes going on that may be causing us to harbor hate for one another? Why do we take part in communion? 
Jesus himself established this so that we may remember Zakar and then appropriately act on his behalf. Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. What's the importance of communion? It brings us all into one accord and it brings us all closer to Jesus. I'll end the way I started with the words of Jesus himself. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Zakar, can I please have the ushers come forward? So um, I'm going to pray this morning for the uh, elements. And we're going to pray for the uh, bread first. Um, So let's just bow our heads for a second. Heavenly Father, this morning I pray for the bread, for the wafer, Lord, that we're going to receive. The bread which you have proclaimed yourself to be your body, which was given for us. You're the Passover lamb, the sacrificial lamb that atones for our sins, Lord. And as we take this bread, we remember, Lord, that you are the bread of life, Father. We thank you, Father. So um, we can pass out these elements, please. So go ahead and partake of the the wafer.
Now I want to pray for the, the juice. Um, Father, we pray for this, this cup, Lord, for this juice that we're about to drink. This cup is, is the new covenant in your blood, Lord. The blood that you shed on Calvary all those 2,000 years ago, every precious drop, Lord, that you shed, you shed for us, every drop from every thorn, every puncture that was placed on your head, Lord, every drop of blood, Lord, that poured out of your, your pores. Father, every drop you shed for us, Father, and we drink this today in remembrance of you and of the sacrifice on the cross that you made for us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And take the juice now. Let's go ahead and uh, close in prayer. Father, we celebrate this morning, Lord, what we received as a result of that sacrifice that you made, Father. Eternal life in your presence we receive. Father, we thank you, Lord, and, and we celebrate this, and we remember, we remember every, everything you did in that finished work, Lord, when you, when you died for our sins. Father, we thank you, Lord, and, and we thank you for all the blessings that we receive as a result of that. Help us, Lord, to remember daily, not just on days of communion, Lord, but daily. Father, we thank you, Lord, and we glorify your name as a church, Father, and we thank you for bringing us closer together and closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now go ahead and stand up with this last song.
Father, Lord, we just thank you for this worship time, Lord, and Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the promises which are in your word, and Lord, uh, we ask that you just help us to have patience, Lord, and not go before you, Lord, and Lord, we know that you have a plan for each one of our lives, Lord, and we, we Lord, Lord, we know that you are mighty and powerful God, Lord, and you're able to do what you say that you're going to do, Lord. So, Lord, help us to just go forth, to walk that straight path, not look to the left nor to the right, but straight ahead into the eyes of your son, Jesus. Amen. God bless you, everybody.